Hawks look to own the future in a new era, Milwaukee welcomes home one of the greats from its past. Marcus Johnson was drafted by the Bucks as the third overall selection in the 1977 NBA draft and played seven seasons with the Bucks. Uh, to get back to an organization that I started my professional career with in 1977, long time ago, but uh, it, it's so many great memories and so many great teams with Don Nelson as our head coach and uh, a lot of similarities too. We were the green and growing bucks. We were green and growing and had a lot of young guys, a lot of first round picks, a lot of guys who were in their second or third years in the league, Brian Winters, Junior Bridgman, Quinn Buckner, uh, who, are, who are veterans with two or three years experience. and so. Uh, just to be a part of something on the ground floor level at that point in time was special just as this is now. Johnson, a 6'7 forward, was on the front line for the green and growing Bucks for six postseason appearances. He was a four-time All-Star and earned three All-NBA honors on beloved Bucks teams. The fans were as, as rabid and as enthusiastic as any fans in the league and the Mecca would be on fire and it was just a great place to play. The fans here enjoyed uh, our style of play as a team, which was blue collar, work ethic, but also we, we were able to bring some flair to the floor. I had a little bit of flair in my game and I think they appreciated that. So it was a combination of the two. I think it worked well in Milwaukee. Johnson was a highly sought after prospect at Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles and drew the attention of UCLA head coach, John Wooden. I was watching uh, UCLA play Memphis State in St. Louis for the NCAA championships in 1973. So the game was over all of about 10 minutes and the phone rings in the den. My father answers the phone and like, hello? Uh, yeah, oh, hold on a second, it's for you. I'm like, okay, so I get on the phone and uh, like, hello? And Coach Wooden's like, Marcus, Coach Wooden, uh, uh, did you watch the game? I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, coach. He's like, well, we'd like for you to be a part of this next year. I was like, you know, uh, done deal. He learned under one of the game's most legendary minds and coaches and was the school's first John Wooden Award winner as a senior in 1977. It was just learning the game from the ground up, uh, learning uh, the game as an empty vessel. He was there to kind of pour in knowledge, pour in wisdom, and it was more than just basketball. A lot of it was his pyramid of success and, and, and life lessons and, and, and his uh, pregame speech. He never talked about winning or losing. He never said, we gotta go out here and you know, beat Oregon, beat Oregon State. It was always about just go out there, do the best you can. You guys are prepared, you practice hard, and after the game is over, if you tried your best, you could walk away with your head held high. Johnson emulated his game after two players he grew up watching in Elgin Baylor and Julius Irving. A scorer who drove to the basket, his 21 points per game are the fourth best in Bucks history. Johnson's game drew the admiration of a young player at the University of North Carolina who shared his initials. Well, for the younger fan base, let me just say this. If, if you can pull it up on the internet, uh, there's, there's a picture of Michael Jordan in his dorm room at North Carolina. He's got an umbrella in his hand. He's got a, some kind of robe tied around or his waist or something. But uh, he's got a, a, my poster in, his, in, his, in, in the background, my poster from Adidas, which was like a, what goes up goes in. So Michael Jordan was a, was, a, was a fan of mine growing up in North Carolina. I got a chance to tease him a little bit about that when he was uh, shooting the movie Space Jam out in Los Angeles. I was doing something on the court doing something, dunk, dunked it a couple of times, and he was like, hey, hey, come on, old man, you know, you don't, you don't need to be trying to dunk. That was never part of your game. I was like, well, you had my poster up in your room in, in, in college, so whatever I was doing back then, I was doing right. He was like, yeah, hey, you got me on that, you got me on that, I sure did, I sure did. I had your poster up, yeah, I used to love your, love your game back then. And so that, that's kind of one of my uh, claims to fame. So that, that's my connection to this, this younger generation is that Michael Jordan was, was a fan of mine back in those days. Since his playing career, Johnson has enjoyed a broadcasting career as an analyst with the Seattle Supersonics and later the Lakers and Clippers. He has been a lead college basketball analyst at Fox Sports for 15 years. Well, first of all, if I'm dreaming, don't slap me. Don't wake <laughs> me up. I get to get to not only work in Milwaukee where I started my career, but to work with the incomparable Gus Johnson. We're going to have a ball this year. Johnson is eager to be back courtside with a Bucks team that reminds him of his own time in a Bucks uniform. They're going to go through growing pains. They're going to go through a learning process, a learning curve, uh, especially the new guys and a guy like Jabari Parker who played just 25 games last year before the injury. So it, it's still some learning and some, 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 some uh, rough patches to kind of navigate and negotiate your way through. But I think eventually with Jason Kidd and, and just the support group, the ownership group and everybody around the fan base here in Milwaukee, I mean, the, the, the recipe for success is here. 